The most common symptoms of abnormal uterine bleeding and fibroids is definitely going to be that heavy bleeding that they find is kind of encroaching on their personal life and their personal space and things that they either used to be able to do, they can't do anymore, or it has caused some other type of symptom along with the bleeding, such as abdominal bloating. It's caused an issue with their sex life. I find that that's common as well. Some women think that their abnormal uterine bleeding is normal. And so that abnormal uterine bleeding becomes their new normal, and it sometimes may take a long time before they're able to actually go talk to their doctor about it or realize that you don't have to live like this anymore. Look at the cycle. Look at how many days they have it. How often do they have it? If they find that it's coming less than 21 days, or it's ranging even more than 35 days, that can be some type of abnormal cycle that they can have with their bleeding, and they really should talk to their doctor at that point. We do have a full range of management and therapies, so those are gonna be medications, whether it's oral contraceptives, whether it's hormones, and those are gonna be things that can help regulate your menstrual cycle and decrease your bleeding. And then we have our procedures, so those can run anywhere from hysteroscopic myomectomy, which can shave down the size of the submucosal fibroids in the cavity, to abnormal uterine bleeding, which you can have an endometrial ablation, which can treat the lining of the endometrial cavity, again, to decrease that bleeding. And then we go more into our surgery. So our surgeries are gonna be something that Again, may incur some incisions, staying over a few nights in the hospital, and those run anywhere from having a laparoscopic radiofrequency ablation, which laparoscopically treats the fibroids, and then you can have your laparoscopic or abdominal open myomectomies, which we're actually taking the fibroids out and reconstructing the uterus in a surgical fashion, and then actually taking out the uterus and therefore not having any issues with bleeding anymore, Having a great relationship with your doctor, I think, is the first step. Because if you're not feeling comfortable about talking those uncomfortable, taboo topics that you go through as a woman, then you're not necessarily going to get all the best options that are for you because you may not divulge necessarily all that information that's pertinent to your disorder. As a physician, our job is to provide the options, and then it's the patient as their best advocate to find out where they are in that journey and how to traverse through that journey on their own and use the help that we're able to offer them.